Welcome. I'm going to cover um, breaking the chain of blame, how to get true test observability. The one thing I'd like you to get out of today is um, using observability in a different uh, place than normal, which is not prod. Uh, the cast today is going to be our QA engineer, our engineer, um, automation engineer, a couple of back end devs, an engineer at Poke API, which is the external vendor we use. There's a front end dev and there's a pointed haired boss. Um, my name just happens to be near the pointed haired boss. I'm the founder of Trace Test. We're going to cover um, four things. We're going to introduce the system under test. And the tests, we're running a playwright test on the system, but I'm going to explain what the system is. We're going to play the blame game. So we have a problem in the test, and we're going to try to figure out what it is. We're going to introduce a couple of concepts, and then we're going to show a playwright test utilizing those concepts. The application that we're going to be using is um, publicly available. It's a Node.js app. It's got a React front end. It's got um, two, pro, uh, two um, services, and really API that doesn't do anything but receives the request, verifies it, throws it on message bus, returns a 200, and then there's an async process that does the real work. It reaches out to an external vendor. Um, at first, it checks a cache. If it gets a cache missed, it reaches out to Poke API, and then it writes to the cache and writes to the database. And all of this, the front end, the two um, services are all sending um, open telemetry information to the collector, and we're um, storing that Jaeger. The app, if you launch it, um, you can click the import button, and you can enter ID, and it should add a Pokemon. And that's the flow we're gonna troubleshoot with our test in a second. This is our test. It's a playwright test and um, just standard playwright, and we can see that um, it's going through the import Pokemon process. And we said it was instrumented, it's um, instrumented with Jaeger, so here is the trace um, for the import process, and we're actually highlighting the spot where we reach out to the Poke API with a particular ID, and we should get back a particular answer. So this is pretty normal instrumented system, we have tests, so let's play the blame game. So what's the problem? Our end-to-end -end test has stopped working. So our playwright test is broke, it stopped our pipeline. We got to see what the problem is, and we see we, we do an import, and then we delete a Pokemon. Well, the delete Pokemon playwright um, test failed. So obviously, the delete function must be broken. Um, so it's not working, so we go back in engineer and they're like, hey, I haven't changed the thing. So we take a closer look and when we do import, we should see a Pokemon show up on the screen. So even though our test said the delete was, is failing, in actuality, it looks like the import's never importing anything. So we're gonna go talk to a different backend engineer. Hey, it looks like the import process ain't working. And I'm from Memphis, so I can use the word ain't legitimately. Um, backend engineers, I haven't changed the thing, it's not me. You know, it's probably the front end guys, the JavaScript, you know, it's, it's bad, so what do you expect? So the QA engineer goes back to the front end guy, and hey, it's, it's not working. Running guys like, I haven't changed a single thing. You know, you better check with the back end devs. Already have, no bueno. I think they're getting tired of me. Well, you know, I think the SREs are using tracing in production. Why don't we set it up in QA and take a look? So we, we do it and we run the test again and we see that we're getting a couple of errors. We drill down and we see we're reaching out to the Poke API with version 1.9, trying to get, you know, it's a test, so it's, it's going after one particular result, 143, and it's getting an error. So since this is a get, let's just drop it in our browser and take a look. And sure enough, this API endpoint's not working. So obviously, it's our third-party vendor 
that's to blame. Reach out to the third party vendor and he's like, hey, it's not broke. It was deprecated months ago. And you know, this caused a lot of trouble. Everybody's kind of mad at each other. Why didn't you tell us about this? Well, we did tell you. We've sent several emails um, to the contact on record, uh, PHB at yourcompany.com. Anybody know who the PHB is? Or the hair boss. He's sitting on a stack of emails. So the problem is the pointed hair boss did not tell us. All right, so let's do a postmortem of this. A third party API buried deep in the system caused the outage. It was super hard to localize the error and find the root cause. It took too long and involved too many of the wrong people. Observability, which is normally just used by the SREs, was helpful in resolving the issue. And a contr contributing problem uh, factor is the boss. That's typically a contributing factor. So action items, investigate util utilizing observability and test. So let's introduce test observability and testability concepts. Um, so I'm defining um, test observability as having two parts to it. First is being able to see a trace with every test. So if you run a test, an artifact that should be readily available is the trace for that test. So you've got more data to look at. And the second part of it is testability. So leveraging the trace to enable you to create tests against the trace with a technique known as trace-based testing, which we'll cover. So today, tracing is mainly used in production by SREs and DevOps reactively to manually troubleshoot after things go wrong. So that's typical use today. Proposing using it also in pre-prod by devs, QAs, automation engineers, in addition to SREs and DevOps. Using it proactively to automatically verify before you actually release, so you prevent problems. So we're not just shifting this work to the left, we're keeping on the left and the right and we're having observability everywhere. So I don't have to explain to this group what observability is and what a trace is, but what is trace-based testing? Uh, Ask GP, GTP, whatever, um, AI to tell me, and it basically says it's validating a system's behavior by comparing system's output with traces generated. So it's basically allowing you to assert against spans that are in a trace. And you'd think this is a brand new concept until you check out YouTube. And this was Ted Jung five years ago talking about trace driven development, utilizing testing and observability. So it's not a new concept. A uh, new diagram we're using to kind of talk about this. Um, typically, you have with API surface when you're testing against it, doing API test. It's black box, it's really flat. You, you hit API, you get back the response, you get back the status code, you don't get a lot of information. And once you have a message bus or async processes behind it, it's really hard to tell what's going on. The browser test tools um, are a little bit richer. They've, you can tell the state of the browser, you can get more information about it, um, but they still stop providing visibility at the API surface. If you bring observability into the testing arena, you also, you can view across the entire system. So you see spans from the front end, from the API gateway, from the back end, um, and you can set assertions across the entire flow to say, I expect certain things to occur. And you can use this um, with any of the trace-based test systems that have been written. There's still a concept of triggering the test. So you still trigger it either with a uh, front end test, load test, or API test. All right, so let's look at a playwright test using both observability and testability. So we're gonna take the test that we ran a minute ago, and we're gonna add a little bit of um, information to define a trace-based test for it. And up till now, everything's just been very general. It didn't matter if you had Jaeger, it didn't matter anything. 
This is a specific format for the tool I represent, but other tools that have done trace-based testing have similar concepts. Um, there's always the concept of a trigger, so how are you gonna trigger the test? And then there's a concept of a selector, and it is what do you apply the assertions to? And, and since it's a treed structure, you have to specify. You have to say, okay, I have this assertion, but what part of the trace do I wanna apply it to? It can be very um, general or it can be very specific. Then you also have assertions, which are every test has assertions. I expect status code equal 200 is probably the most frequent assertion. Looking at the first, um, the first test, we're basically gonna look at every HTTP span and if any of them do not return with 200, we're gonna fail the test. And that's a functional test with a wild card. Next, we're gonna look at a non-functional test, looking at performance, and we're gonna say, hey, if any of our database spans operate slowly, we're gonna fail the test. So if someone puts in a query that is working with no data or with no index behind it, we're gonna fail the test immediately before it gets in production. And then last, we have a very specific assertion that selects one particular span, and since we're, return, since we're sending a certain ID for a Pokemon, we know what result we should get back, and we're gonna make sure we get that exact result. We've kept the playwright test just as it was. So it clicks on the button, enters the ID, and then um, looks, waits for some results. But when we run it now, the playwright test gets some additional information. It runs the trace-based test um, using the trace from, that was generated from this. In this case, it's showing us that two of the assertions failed. The assertion saying we should get status code 200 for all of the HTTP spans, one of them failed. And then the very specific one saying we should get a certain um, response when we call this API, it also failed. If we follow the link, we can see two things. We get uh, observability, we get a trace with this test. So we ran the test, we get a trace. So right then, even without assertions, it's gonna help us diagnose the problem. And the second thing you get is you can see exactly which one of the assertions failed. If we were to click on the database one, which did not fail, we get specific information about each of the database calls. If one of them failed, we could click on it and we'd see the failure. So after introducing test observability, I don't know we have a totally blameless um, system, but hopefully there's less blame going around. Um, one thing that I've seen with implementing tests or observability in tests is everybody starts caring about the trace. So it's not just for the SREs, it's for the, the developers to start caring. If they start writing tests based on traces, they start caring about traces and the traces get better, which helps the SREs. And JavaScript's still not a real language. So key takeaways. Um, leverage your existing instrumentation, observability backend, and test. So you don't have to change out every, anything or everything. Um, add observability and testability in both pre-prod and prod environments. Use observability proactively, not just reactively. And I think that's a big thing. I, I think the use case has always been, things break, we're gonna use observability. This changes that um, paradigm. Increase the use and adoption of observability across the entire team, so make the entire team care about it. And hopefully stop or reduce the blame game. And there's a couple of repos out there with the code for this. Um, easy to download, you can run it in Docker. And that's the presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. On the retry policies, that's interesting. Um, 
and it's probably complex for, the, for a short answer. I think I'd have to see the scenario. Um, I think you would look for the eventual success on the retry. So you'd, you'd have an assertion that says, I'm gonna accept these, but I better get this final success. And maybe a system underneath, you check a system underneath and say it better progress to this area. Good question. Okay. Yes. We've been talking about it. So we're a small team. So so for our, and I try not to be product specific, but for trace test specifically, small team. So we just are pretty focused right now on you know core functionality. Um, but we've started talking about AI and where it could be used. Um, so like I think telling, since we run synthetic tests, which are predictable, we're giving we're we're hitting with the tests. We exact we expect um, the same result looking at differences between tests automatically starts becoming pretty um, pretty compelling. Any other questions? Right. Thank you, appreciate it.